This is me speaking here, and I'm asking your opinion because you're around the game a lot. There's a, there's a feeling that I have that a lot of guys are playing in this tournament and they're going to go to the U.S. Open after this. And then once the slings and arrows that all these guys in London are taking right now might start thinking about, well, if they're offering me 50 million or 20 million or what I could make after, you know, five more years on tour, I'll go because it's going to get easier to move along after the slings and arrows come out here. Do you have a feeling about what happens after the U.S. Open when it comes to North America and, I believe, Portland? Yeah, you know, the, the PGA Tour has granted these releases for guys to play uh, in tournaments uh, on tours uh, during PGA Tour events because they've always been um, outside of the United States. They, they did not grant these releases because it's part of a series where there are tournaments in the United States going up against PGA Tour events. So mm -hmm. uh, the USGA came out and said, hey, listen, you qualified for the U.S. Open based on our uh, qualification criteria. You're in. No problem. Now, uh, technically, the guys have haven't done anything wrong until they actually hit a shot tomorrow. So from what I understand, from what I've been hearing, it sounds like the PGA Tour may drop the hammer starting tomorrow. What mm. that looks like, whether it's uh, full-on bans, whether it's suspensions, uh, etc., it kind of remains to be seen. But as soon as a shot is hit, then they have technically violated the player's handbook and the player's rules. So more to come likely tomorrow and, and certainly into Friday, which again, unfortunately, takes a little bit of shine off the first two rounds of the RBC Canadian Open. So hopefully Corey Connors goes out and shoots 59 tomorrow <laughs> and ruins all of that. And gets the spotlight right back on Canada. So one last one for you here, and, and this is astonishing to me, but the rumor is um, DJ gets $125 million to join this tour. A lot. Yeah. Tiger has made $121 million on the course and has been the greatest golfer that we have ever seen uh, at this level at this time. Is there any way that live is sustainable at these numbers? Wow, that's the hundred million dollar question, yeah. most likely. <laughs> and I think the interesting thing is that yeah. the people who are the people who are bankrolling it, the the Saudi government, have basically unlimited funds. Will it's kind of one of these play things, you know? It's an exhibition series. Maybe they're just going to get bored of it in two years. They're certainly yeah. not going to run out of money. Um, but how how often, how long can they go offering these hundred million dollar paydays to these guys remains to be seen. I, I truly think that it's going to be one of these things where. We had our fun. It kind of worked. We didn't get who we wanted. Now Phil's 55, or now Lee Westwood's 51, and, right. and these guys aren't really doing anything. And we and we didn't snag Colin Morikawa or Justin Thomas or Rory McIlroy. What are we really doing out here? It was fun. We're done. So, again, kind of remains to be seen, but uh, for right now, these guys have all the money in the world.